cut out of Nate there because the opposition leader Bill Shorten has just stepped up from media conference. He's in Bundaberg in southern Queensland. Supporting Leanne Donaldson and indeed Anastasia Palaszczuk because we can't afford for TAFE to go backwards and that's the very real risk if Tim Nichols and Pauline Hanson are successful in this election. It is too big a risk to education and training in Queensland with Mr Turnbull and his education cuts nationally to have those cuts mirrored in the event that the LNP was successful. The federal government, the federal LNP government, have cut money from TAFE and training, $600 million. They've cut, made it harder for working class kids to go to university. They've cut funding for schools. And when you remember that when Mr Nichols was last Treasurer of Queensland, he oversaw the closure of state schools, a hit list of more schools to be cut, and of course TAFE did very hard under the LNP. And TAFE is as important as university when it comes to the future of regional Queensland. Those auto mechanics, the mechanical tradespeople that we're meeting, third year apprentices, that's exactly what this country needs. We need to make sure that for people who are finishing up school, who don't want to go to university, that we're giving them a trades qualification. A lot of tradies in Australia are getting older and I am sick and tired of the LNP, leave it to the market, privatise at all costs, export our jobs overseas culture. Only Leanne Donaldson and Anastasia Palaszczuk can be trusted to stand up for TAFE. And of course, the other problem in the Queensland election is Leanne's not just fighting the LNP. She's got to stand up against the LNP satellite, also known as the One Nation Party. The problem in Canberra is that One Nation promised a lot at the last election, but almost nine in every 10 times they vote in Canberra, they vote for LNP measures. So it's one thing to put the word battler on your bus. But the problem is that the One Nation Party does everything to kick battlers in the head every time. They support the cut of penalty rates. They support the cuts to education. They support the cuts to our health care. It's not good enough. If you want to make sure that Queensland region doesn't get forgotten, then the only choice in town is Anastasia Palaszczuk and, of course, Leanne Donaldson here in Bundy. Happy to take questions. Well, to answer the second part of your question first, there is no doubt that Mr Turnbull's government is engulfed in a citizenship crisis. The Deputy Prime Minister was found to be illegitimately elected. They've lost LNP ministers. And after the High Court made their decision, we then found out that the LNP President of the Senate, one of the most senior office bearers in the Australian Constitution, wasn't eligible to sit as the President of the Senate. This is a citizenship crisis, not of Labor's making, but it is most serious. And it's most serious, not just because the government's in trouble, but because the Australian people are losing confidence in the government and the parliament. So returning to the first part of your question, I encouraged the Prime Minister last Friday to actually have a universal disclosure. All the members of parliament should fess up, come clean on their details. We think that's important. Initially, when I said that last Friday, Mr Turnbull, I think, unfortunately, sneered and said, no, terrible idea. But by Monday, obviously, when he received facts which we're not fully aware of, I think, yet, he changed his tune. So, of course, I met with him at the first available opportunity. We did make constructive progress here, so it's not all doom and gloom. I understand that the Prime Minister uh, had a bit of a tantrum on television this morning. That you know, I get that he's under pressure. But I just want to say to Australians who want to look beyond the carry-on and the name-calling, we did make progress. Labor only has two, only two outstanding issues. I think they're important issues. And for the sake of clarity, I'll briefly explain them. The first of our issues is that Mr Turnbull proposed a test for MPs to disclose, but it is not, in my opinion, the High Court standard. You know, I take perhaps an old-fashioned tradies approach. My dad was a tradesman. He always said to me, do it once, do it right. We need to uphold the High Court standard. So that's the first difference we have. And I will send to Mr Turnbull this today 
our view about what the High Court standard is. The second difference we have is one of timing. I think this crisis has gone on long enough, and I think many Australians would agree with me. We want MPs to universally disclose all their circumstances by the 1st of December. Mr Turnbull says it'll take longer than that, and therefore we may need to reconvene Parliament. I don't want to see taxpayer dollars wasted. One more dollar wasted sorting out Mr Turnbull's constitutional and governmental crisis. We can, I mean, if you'd have to live on another planet if you're an MP not to realise that you should need to sort out your citizenship information. So that's essentially the difference we have. These are not, the bridge is not too big to be, the divide is not too big to be bridged. What I want to do is maintain the High Court standard and I also think we need to do it by December the 1st. On the same issue, uh, Mr Turnbull's comments this morning were that you're wasting time and you don't want to see this solved because you can't reach an agreement on how to move forward. What's your response to that? Oh, I understand that he's under pressure. I read in the Courier Mail today on the front page that Mr Turnbull wanted to take one course of action, which I think sounded more sensible and closer to Labor's view, but it got rolled by his Cabinet Ministers. So I understand it's not easy. And I'm just saying to the Australian people, we are capable of fixing this citizenship crisis. I'm prepared to work in good faith. Mr Turnbull put a document on the table. I don't think anyone's surprised if we don't immediately sign up to the first document we see, especially when you look at the cascading problems that the government's had. But this is fixable. And I just say to the Australian people, what Labor wants is that MPs to make disclosures which meet the High Court test of the Constitution. And we want to do it by December the 1st. Pauline Hanson agrees with you that these citizen issues should be dealt with, um, especially the existing proceedings schedule. Can you mm. agree with that? Well, I think most Australians would agree with Labor's proposition that if Parliament is scheduled to sit for two weeks, from November the 27th and the week after that as well, that that is adequate time to fix it. Mr Turnbull came up with a proposition, it was a complex proposition, where he said, well, if we don't put all our documents into December the 7th, then that means we'll have to reconvene Parliament at the cost of nearly $1 million a day, closer to Christmas. I've got no hassle about working extra hours, but I think that the Australian people say, just get on with it, just get on with it, and that's what we're up for. Do you think that the Governor-General should intervene if you can't come to an Oh, I haven't given up reaching an agreement. You know, I've been around the block. I understand. I hear what the Australian people are saying. They're saying, can't the members of Parliament work out if they're eligible to be in Parliament? And I just want to say to the Australian people, yes, we can. I was as surprised as everyone else that the Deputy Prime Minister was ineligible. I was surprised that Minister Nash was ineligible. I was surprised that the President of the Senate came forward after all the hoo-ha and said, oh, by the way, I might be ineligible and subsequently was ineligible. I'm surprised that Minister Fifield, a senior numbers man for Mr Turnbull, knew about the President of the Senate's predicament but said nothing. That is why Labor has taken the lead and we've taken the unusual, in the unusual set of circumstances we face and said, I think everyone needs to put up the case and demonstrate that they're not dual citizens. We're prepared to do that. I've done that myself personally already when Mr Turnbull asked me to. I'm now asking Mr Turnbull to apply the same standards to himself and his team that he demanded of me. So, so I'm just going to repeat because the Australian people are saying, well, what's this Punch and Judy show all about? Again, to be really explicit, we want the MPs to disclose to meet the High Court standard, not something less. So I feel like I want a tougher disclosure regime than Mr Turnbull, but I think eventually he will see that that is a sensible course of action, do it once and fix it. The other thing is we want to have all the MPs with their information out there by December the 1st, so we don't need taxpayers, as you said into your question, spending $700,000 a day merely because government MPs can't sort out their paperwork. Do you think it'll be the middle ground? Oh, I think it's very straightforward. The Constitution is the Constitution. We don't need to change the Constitution. We just need members of Parliament to comply with the Constitution. It's served us well for 117 years. But what we also need to do is make sure that as MPs provide their information, we don't do a half-baked solution. What's the point of doing a test lesser than the High Court standards? then we're just all back here arguing again and people will even be more annoyed at us. Let's do it right the first time, High Court standard, December the 1, and the Parliament doesn't have to expend extra money to sort out, you know, if there's any further questions for the High Court to address. Is there any way you'd agree to record in Parliament before Christmas? Well, 
I take uh, the expenditure of taxpayer money very seriously. If we are going to be there from the, tw the Monday the 27th and again on the week of the 4th, surely in those two weeks, MPs can provide their material that can be analysed and scrutinised, and then at least we know where we stand. Mr Turnbull's argument that we need even more time after that, I think is um, a trifle complex and definitely wasteful of taxpayer money. And if we have to meet again, we will. But let's try and use the time we've got to make sure that not only do we efficiently expend taxpayers' money, we just sort out this mess once and for all. Alison, I think that what happened was some idiots behaved abysmally. Um, Senator Dastiari, his faith and background shouldn't be the source of racial vilification and, and, and insult. I think he handled himself very well. Uh, and let's be clear, what do you think of someone's politics? You don't have a licence to go and stand over and bully people. There were another hundred people there who were all very happy with the discussion that went on You've got a couple of idiots trying to get their names on tele... I can only assume it's to get their names on television, but it was racially mean. And Sam's a federal senator. He can look after himself. I get worried about the green light this gives for the idiots on the bus to abuse the women who look different, for the, for the uh, green light this gives to racially vilify. You know, the, the strength of our country is everyone comes here and adheres to Australian values and Australian laws, but we take people, as, I, as our anthem says from all across the world and all across the water. So Bonner Bird is seen as a three-horse race between One Nation, Labour and LNP. What will take for the answer to retake, reclaim the seat? I see Bundaberg as a two-choice race. Do you go with properly funding TAFE and our schools and our healthcare system? Do you go with proper infrastructure? Do you go with prioritising Australian jobs? Or do you go with LNP or their proxies, One Nation? I see that's the choice. Leanne Donaldson, you know, she's done, she'd been very active in Bundaberg. And I, the issues in Bundaberg are a template, I think, of what happens across the nation. You need good infrastructure funding here. I think it is absurd. You've got some of the best fruit and veggie in the world, but they've got to fly south to Brisbane to fly north to Asia. You know, that's, I think we can do more to help infrastructure here. You had the big storm cell here on Tuesday. We've got to make sure that there's proper insurance offered to the businesses here. You know, Leanne's right, she's got her finger on the pulse and she'll look after, make Bundaberg a region where people can raise families, where their kids don't have to leave to do their TAFE and where there are good quality jobs here. All right, everybody, I think that's probably a good point to make. Thanks. Thank you. OK, so that was live from Bundaberg in southern Queensland, the opposition leader Bill Shorten pitching in for Anastasia Palaszczuk in the Queensland election. And just on federal issues, Bill Shorten saying he has two problems with the proposal the Prime Minister has put forward to determine the citizenship status of all federal MPs. So this has come in the middle of this uncertainty about whether MPs are actually entitled to sit because of the rule that they can't hold dual citizenship. Mr Shorten says the test that Mr Turnbull has put forward doesn't meet the High Court standard. And he says the deadline for MPs to produce proof should be December the 1st. Uh, so no doubt we'll hear more on that through the day.